Hello, and welcome to the Astrology Wish podcast. I'm your host, Tiana, and today we will be discussing the second house in astrology. One quick note I want to express before we get into it, and this is something that I like to disclose in some of my episodes, most of them, is that all natal chart placements are interpreted by various astrologers differently. That's why so many astrologers may define different placements and have something that just seems like completely different than somebody else. And I think it's important to listen to many different interpretations so you can see which one resonates with you the most and get a more well-rounded idea of what may be indicated for each placement in your chart. And keep in mind that the second house specifically is only one area of your chart and without considering all other placements alongside aspects, it can only represent a small piece of the wider vision that makes up you and your life. Okay, so let's get started. In astrology, the second house rules resources, your self-esteem and self-worth, anything that you possess, so you can possess your feelings and emotions about yourself, but you can also possess things, right? can have money and wealth and property. Um, It often indicates job and career as well because we utilize things like jobs and careers to bring income and resources to us. It's often referred to as the house of possessions. Those possessions, again, which are both tangible and intangible. It's natively ruled by the sign of Taurus and the planet Venus. And it describes our values, possessions, finances, self-worth, and material desires. The second house rules all things that encapsulate a person's financial standing and status that are ours and ours alone. It indicates the value we give to ourselves and everything we do. Shared resources and items fall in a different house, so it's important to make that distinction. Uh, And this only refers to things that are ours and ours alone. The second house encompasses everything that we own. Literally, metaphorically, we own our inner selves, our desires, our abilities, self-worth, self-image, and then we own material items. We have a sense of inner well-being or lack thereof, and it involves our concept of value. What do we value? This includes physical items and again, non-physical attributes, and why do we give these things value? What do we own or what do we desire to own or whom uh, and why? The second house expresses our personal assets, but also how we feel about those assets and how those feelings can motivate or demotivate us when it comes to earning and spending. And it can draw boundaries for what a person's comfort level is when it comes to stability or insecurity regarding lending, borrowing, earning money, uh, spending money. Uh, Because the second house rules both income and expenses. It even rules investments and um, like shares and turnovers and things like that. All things that would be encompassed by finances. Possessions can fall, which can fall under the second house rulership, include how we make money. So our earned income, as well as the abilities we may have to influence that. It includes our investments and tangible items such as clothing, cars, jewelry, etc., It also encompasses debt and bills. Uh, These can be accounted for in the second house alongside how we perceive money, uh, acquiring money and wealth, acquiring debt, having a savings, budgeting, and our financial status. It can also incorporate our perception of the things we own, our financial capabilities, and what we might do with those things. The second house also indicates our powers of manifestation, or lack thereof. In the second house, we're able to materialize the energy of any planets and zodiac signs there to create things we can utilize, enjoy, or hold in our hands. And it can sometimes indicate how we harness that energy in our first house and express it in our second in order to feed ourselves both literally and spiritually. And in fact, the second house can sometimes refer to like our eating habits and things like that. This source of revenue strengthens both our physical body and benefits our spiritual one, allowing us to feel good and to feel valuable within ourselves. 
Again, as I said, sometimes it even shows what kind of food we might enjoy eating and our eating habits alongside how those things can affect our financial situation. Do you spend too much on food? Are you oscillating between eating too much or eating too little? Uh, it could be indicated in your second house. Once we can harness those energies within the second house to work for us rather than against us, we can not only nourish our bodies properly, but we can also find more balance, clarity, and confidence. If a beneficial planet is placed in the second house and the aspect is well dignified, it can aid a person to be open to helping others with their finances and blessing their financial returns for such deeds. Uh, it could alternatively make a person more stingy or insecure about their financial situation and motivate them to hold on to their money more tightly. And in matters of self-worth and self-esteem, the second house indicates uh, a person's motivations and it dictates the feelings they have about what they wish to gain and possess. It also deals with the connection a person feels regarding what they own and how much value they may feel their possessions give them. You know, whether a person feels that you've met those people that you go to their house and they need to show you all of their possessions, that may be indicated in the second house. Someone who feels that their personal possessions give them an inner sense of value or even a value in the eyes of how others perceive them. So it can indicate which career a person may be best suited to especially when paired with the 6th and the 10th house. The second house, however, strongly indicates which career or job is ideal for bringing material gains, but it doesn't always incorporate a career that the person may enjoy. So that is an important thing to distinguish, is that even if your second house has an indicator that says you should be, I don't know, doing something technical, it's not the full picture. We need to take a view of your big three, your sixth house and tenth house of career, even the midheaven sign, if that's slightly different than the tenth house, and incorporate all of these as well as aspects to fully understand and get a broader picture of what career would not only be able to bring monetary gains, but also internal satisfaction. Mars and Uranus are not great to have here, but Venus is at home in the second house. And Jupiter brings incredible blessings because Jupiter will expand wherever it's placed. And it expands when placed here in a money-related house. So Venus, you know, is in its domicile. It's going to be more natural placement. However, Jupiter is great because it's going to bring amazing blessings. And we'll talk a little bit more about planets at the end, um, and I'll expand a little bit more on that. Saturn, when it's well aspected, can be a decent planet here as well. It can bring quite a lot of el uh, wealth, but as with any Saturn placement, it's often later in life, and it might force the person in question to really work and put in the effort to attain whatever it is that they want, because that's just the nature of Saturn. <laughs> Uh, as I was saying, Mars and Uranus, not so great to have in the second house, especially if considered debilitated in whatever sign they're in, uh, or if they are poorly aspected. And in that case, it could indicate loss of income or instability in terms of self-worth or job security. Um, and ironically, the sun placed in your second house is not always the best placement either because it can indicate a lot of expenses, even if a lot of wealth is also there. Uh, the sun present in the second house can indicate that a person should harness their assets to express their identity without worrying about like saving or uh, really worrying about their financial situation, ironically. So, of course, I'm not going to go too deeply into each sign here because that could make up an entire episode if I wanted it to. But here's a quick breakdown into what each sign in the second house could indicate for you if you have it. Okay, so... Aries is challenging, instinctual, ambitious, fearful, and it represents quick gains led by your sense of instinct. So using that gut feeling, you could, I mean, this is like a person who could really make gains on the stock market just by using their gut instincts. Uh, and because they are not afraid to go with their first impulse. Uh, however, they could have also quick losses if it's not well aspected or if they are not mindful of how they function and use those quick gains, quick losses. 
Uh, and I would also say Aries is a great uh, sign to have if there are no other planets present uh, to get things done and take action in terms of getting a job or uh, achieving the things they want. They may have to work a little harder to gain the sense of self-worth and find substance um, through not only their actions, but also through um, knowing an inner sense of self-worth because they might struggle with taking actions and then if it doesn't work out, then feeling like low self-worth. Okay, so Taurus here is in domicile. That means that Taurus naturally rules this house because it's a Venus-ruled house, uh, so it's in domicile. And people with this placement can be secure. Um, they value what they, they have specifically, right? Their possessions. Uh, they enjoy luxury items. They're learning self-worth. They might have a talent for finance and a tendency to take too much responsibility for things in relationships. Gemini is carefree. They may have quick gains in money. Uh, they might do really well with contract work. Um, they could do really well with multiple jobs. They may be gifted for writing uh, and have like incredible social skills or networking skills. They could have nervous or anxious tendencies. However, they are sociable and charming. Okay, so Cancer here are usually people who have traditional family values. Uh, they may be protective, they may earn family in a family trade or a family business or start their own business legacy that then becomes like a family uh, run um, business or, or operation. Uh, they'll do well to work from home because <laughs> there might be homebodies. They find a lot of joy in food and cooking and family gathering, so they might be the hostess with the mostest. Uh, otherwise, they could be trust fund kids or like silver, silver spoon type people born into wealth. Not necessarily people who inherit wealth after someone dies, but like someone who's just born in it and then just given like a spending account and just never has to worry about money. Uh, okay, so if you have Leo here, you could be flamboyant, confident, amusing, loving luxury items. Uh, there are people with Leo here their identity is gonna be their money. So this often is a placement seen by people who are actors, performers, models, influencers, etc. They'll be confident in monetary issues, but lack confident in themselves, depending on how others view them. There's a lot wrapped up in like how their personal reputation is or like what other opinion other people's opinions are about them. So they have to learn to balance the ego with strong confidence and a strong sense of self to face challenges with courage and not be beaten down by that aspect. Okay, so if you have Virgo here, you may be controlled, discontented, critical. And this placement is somewhat in its fall here in a Venus ruled house. You have to find value in success and actions instead of seeking out criticisms and flaws because the mind is very rational, detail oriented, could get bogged down in the details. But it, they are very capable and they can gain money from their own hard work and dedication and that attention to detail can become a strength and an asset and they will have slow gains over time. If you have Libra in the second house, you're balanced, harmonious, charming, and self-worth and value may come via their relationship with others so they should watch out for things like envy, comparison becoming the thief of joy, gains and blessings may come through partnerships or a spouse however there's a tendency toward vanity and the most monetary gains they may experience is working in a team or a partnership which is highly favorable they may also get a lot of gains working in justice or law as libra is known for such things okay so if you're scorpio you may feel <laughs> slightly like finances or self-worth is a bit out of your control and may change and transform frequently. So you value shared resources, possibly in a partnership or with your family. Uh, you could have gains through inheritance, usually after a death, but sometimes via legacy business or trust fund. Um, this placement has to learn to find joy in change and growth because Scorpio is such a transformative sign. 
to have here. And gains will depend largely on the generosity that you have via deeds, done choices, and your ancestral line. And it doesn't necessarily mean that money is hard to come by. It just means that whatever you have, you must use wisely and to help others. So if you have Sagittarius here, you are independent, optimistic, probably very lucky because it's a Jupiter ruled sign. Um, gains may be easily obtained, but also tough to hold on to. You probably will gain most fulfillment and monetary gains uh, via teaching, travel, or higher spirituality or philosophy. You'll have easy luck, but like a tendency to overdo it. Wherever Jupiter is, there's luck, but a tendency to overdo it. So you may overdo it when it comes to eating, spending, or earning, and may want to watch out for that. There may be a sense of overconfidence or lacking in practicality, and common sense will need to develop these, uh, will be needed to develop these qualities for long lasting success and self worth. Otherwise, again, you're going to fall back into maybe like a blind optimism and, you know, uh, being taken advantage for even if you're not careful. Okay, so if you have Capricorn here, you'll be ambitious, hardworking, realistic, practical. Um, however, it requires you to take full responsibility and work for financial gains to manifest um, monetary gains and even for healthy eating routines because you might oscillate between like overdoing it and then restricting yourself. Self-care is also needed for good self-worth. These people might need like to really dedicate time to like rest and self-care and taking care of their physical body and having like a healthy routine that's not self-destructive because they can really take things too far with the strictness. Uh, Aquarius here is experimental, unpredictable, a little bit chaotic, has changing values, um, except when it comes to friendship and societal values that they think would be like better for the world. Um, they have a need to take financial risks and even health risks and maybe even like eat too much junk food and like just pedal to the metal and like put too much stress on their body. So that's something to watch out for. Um, however, they will find freedom through monetary gains when they have strong plans behind those goals. And they only seem to be consistent when it comes to, again, friendship and societal values that better humanity. Pisces, they can be insecure, lacking in boundaries, a tendency to lose things like those people who always lose their keys. Um, they might be those people also who are satisfied with less possessions or money, um, more so than other placements. Like they may just be able to just be in the moment and be completely content, even if they don't have a lot. There may also be a tendency to overestimate abilities at times. So it's important for these people to prepare and be practical in their applications and the main goal should be to follow their true life purpose because that is where true contentment will lie um and especially for a placement like pisces it may lie in like helping other people or doing something that requires a little bit of self-sacrifice okay so here i'm going to go into the planets okay so the sun is in the second house will be very adaptive it can bring a lot of wealth as i previously mentioned and a lot of confidence it can bring solid values however it can also bring greed and materialism and a tendency to be superficial uh, a love for luxury items and it's most important to discover what you truly find to be valuable and worth pursuing to achieve material success and not worry so much about the opinions of others um, or getting them to like love you for the things you have, right? And developing your own inner self. If you have the moon here, it can be incredibly lucrative because the moon changes and it's very changeable. The adaptability of that brings success and wealth, but can have instability, right? You could have unstable finances that ebb and flow. You can have self-esteem that, you know, is great one day and then not so great the next day if you're not careful. So it's important to have a stable financial plan this placement has really good instincts for property investment so make good investments so when your finances you know ebb and flow as they will you will have kind of a backup plan there to not worry so much um and also the ebb and flow with self-esteem that you have a self-care and a um good self-value plan whether that's a support system or you know positive affirmations or 
a self-care plan that involves health and fitness that keeps you on track when those moments hit you so they don't hit you so hard. Uh, and this placement specifically basically inherits the attitudes that they have about money and possessions from their family and or parents. And that's for better or worse. So if you have family or parents that have an attitude about money, that's great. You're going to do awesome. You might really, you know, inherit some great habits and great um, ideas about how to gain wealth. On the other hand, if you have somebody that, you know, their family isn't so great with money or has a bad attitude toward finances generally or possessions or owning things, you might struggle a little more and have to rewrite that for yourself. If you have Mercury here, then it can make a person incredibly inventive, charming, exceptional speaking and writing skills, someone who's humorous, tolerant, and most gains will come from working with finances or the little details of something that's practically applied. Um, and also, I mean, Mercury could technically go into something like motivational speaking, be an author, or, you know, even like a comedian or somebody that speaks for a living. That could be good too. Okay, Venus. Venus is very creative, very charming, artistic. They're often blessed with a life of luxury since Venus is at home in the second house. Obviously, this depends on the aspects. Uh, but the second house is natively ruled by Venus, so this is a very natural placement. These people will probably be talented in the arts, fashion, or social-related professions, maybe like marketing or something that requires charm and persuasion. Uh, and it's important for these people to define their true values in a way that brings true contentment and avoid superficiality. They might be very beautiful and uh, utilize that beauty to earn an income or attract monetary gains in some way, such as like a model or someone, I mean, if you're going to be very superficial about it, a trophy wife, um, you know, sugar daddy, sugar mama type situation. Um, same thing for cancer could even be that way if you're not careful <laughs> or if it's, you know, not a great aspect. Um, and they'll be naturally good at making money doing literally anything. Uh, the important thing is to make sure it's fulfilling, otherwise your inner values could struggle. Okay, so if you have Mars here, you're very forceful, assertive, aggressive. You may even have like aggressiveness and arguments with other people regarding your values and like kind of needing to be right. Um, it's ideal to align your self-worth with your financial income that suits your values. So not just making money in a way that you find to be unethical, but in a way that suits what you believe about the world and material items. You can gain money in any way that you apply your efforts. And Mars allows you to achieve self-worth and monetary gains however you apply yourself. So it's actually more important to do so in a way that aligns with your inner values. And then monetary gains will show themselves. Okay, Jupiter, again, very lucky placement, blessings for income. These people have high ideals. They could be very religious or spiritual. Um, they might have a tendency to overspend, and sometimes they'll build money and possessions to display the extent of their beliefs. Um, and it's important that those items don't take over as your beliefs, because beliefs themselves are intangible and you don't need to be buying so many things, but that is a tendency with this placement. And focus on using your luck with monetary gains to help other people and find wisdom in true substance and value. Okay, so if you have Saturn here, it's a dominant placement, or sorry, it makes a person dominant, uh, mature, serious. They will gain through steady efforts. They may have conservative values and strive to learn what true value in life is as opposed to only practical gains. Monetary gains and value will improve over time, but Saturn takes quite a bit for the um, rewards to show themselves. If you have Uranus here, you're insightful, unpredictable. You may have unexpected gains through lucky chance. Uh, like this placement might be like incredibly good at gambling. Um, Awakening in areas of self-worth and material gain are possible when they are stable. So if that's something that you're looking for, like a spiritual awakening. Uh, these people often have talents for science, engineering, psychology, or something unconventional, even like technology related probably too. If you have Neptune here, you're imaginative, self-satisfied, 
creative, a tendency to not care too much about possessions or material gains. They might accept life as it is and just enjoy each moment, which is incredible for, you know, being present and really basking in all the good things. However, they may be sensitive about self-worth and money affairs, and it's under they need to understand their deep financial worth and that the worth will arrive in proportion to whatever they value and how they feel about it. And that's what is essential to this place. So understanding the deep financial worth that you inherently have, that will bring money to you, if that makes sense. <laughs> and finally, Pluto, they are drastic, emotionally distressed at times. They may even have mental health struggles or financial troubles depending on uh, depending on how their childhood was because Pluto is here in the second house and sometimes the second house can... Um, it can sometimes indicate a troubled childhood, specifically with self-worth and money. Sometimes it's like, you know, emotional abuse or physical abuse from parents. It can be even just financial struggles too, just in your childhood, your parents not being able to hold on to cash or having money problems. However, that's not always the case. Um, it's vital that this person develops a deep sense of inner self-worth and value by healing whatever hurt and pains of their childhood exist, and this transforms their ability to manifest material gain in life. Pluto is obviously very transformational, so money may come easy, but actual value needs to be learned in order to keep that flow of wealth coming toward you. And that is pretty much what I've got for you today about the second house. I know these ones are a little bit shorter, but I'm just trying to keep it pretty concise. I am working on another series where I go through each zodiac sign in um, every house for each episode. So that'll be really long and drawn out. Uh, and this is just kind of like shorter form. So hopefully you guys find it helpful. And the second house is, you know, very instructive for people who are worried about career or self-worth and finding ways to improve their self-care routine, even their health routine in terms of body um, and eating specifically. Uh, and, and that alongside the sixth house, which rules health and wellness, can be a great way to look at what health routines and um, wellness routines we can incorporate into our lives to avoid illness and nourish our bodies and fuel ourselves in a way that makes us feel good. And that in turn actually can fuel our second house monetary area where we can bring gains to ourselves, whether it's in uh, the form of stuff, possessions, or whether it's in the form of self-value and self-esteem or just, you know, acquiring wealth. So I hope you guys found this helpful. And if you did, let me know. I'm on social media. I'm on Twitter at Astro W Podcast. I'm on Instagram at the Astrology Witch Podcast, and I am also on Facebook. I have a Facebook page called the Astrology Witch Podcast where I share like different memes and fun things. Uh, and also, I have a Patreon. So if you feel inclined to support me, that would be amazing. Uh, you just search on Patreon for Astrology Witch Podcast, and I have all kinds of cool, exclusive perks there, exclusive content, ad-free episodes. And also, um, path workings if for all of the Sabbaths in the year, in the Wheel of the Year, if that's something that interests you. I'm also, I uh, recently started working on um, different path workings for the zodiac signs. That was an idea from a listener, so thank you so much for your listening. Uh, great idea. Um, so I will be working on that. And also, I have exclusive merch there, so each uh, level of patron will get a uh, you know some level of exclusive merch when they decide to support me so love to see you over there but if not then i still appreciate you listening here and i hope that it has given you some clarity on your placements and an understanding of what placement and planets could mean for you so i hope you're doing well and i'll see you in the next episode thanks mm -hmm.